I shall fear no evil. And I'm not scared of the devil. I know who my comforter is. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. And I thank you, Lord, for letting me be able to believe in that with all my heart. I hope y'all really believe in your master, the Satan, the sleuth foot, devil himself, because he's not going to help you. He's going to laugh at you, mock at you, and torture you. He didn't need your help. The devil's got all the devils he needs. The good Lord said Lucifer and a third of the angels were cast from heaven. He didn't need them, but he took their mind and he manipulated them. And they prayed to Satan and they prayed to the devil. And they had their satanic worship services out here. And they had all types of wild homosexual orgies, I've been told. Crazy things. To me, this place as I stand is like hell on earth because I know that three babies were killed right out here where I stand. I know my son was castrated and possibly laid there on that bank and bled to death. I know he was choked. I know one boy's head was beat in beyond recognition. I know one little boy was skinned almost like an animal. Cut, had to shave his head, had all types of injuries to the head where they just kept beating and pounding on them and killing them and killing them. It's like they enjoyed it. They killed them two or three times. Jesse Miskelly Jr., Jason Baldwin, Damian Eccles, I hope your master of the devil does take you soon. I want you to meet him real soon. And the day you die, I'm gonna praise God. And I make you a promise. The day you die, every year on May 5th, I'm gonna to come to your graveside. I'm gonna spit on you. I'm gonna curse the day you were born. And I'm sure while I'm standing there, I'm gonna to have to have other bodily functions let go upon your grave. I promise you, as God is my witness, I'll visit all three of your graves. There's a voice calling me from an old rugged tree, and it whispers, draw closer to me. Leave. Eat it up. You know, one thing I like about this right here, black powder gun, is they can't pull any type of ballistics on it. If by some chance you was to shoot something with it, every bullet rifles through the chamber just a little bit different. So they just can't pull no ballistics off this. There's a few people I wouldn't mind going on shooting with it, but hopefully the courts and the justice system take care of them. But they read prison, they gonna get took care of. Yo, Todd, I could save the state a lot of money. If they just let me line them three son of a guns up, I'd say this one here's for you, Jesse, and we gonna go for the jug of water. Oh, Jesse, I done blowed you half and two, son. Yeah. Now, this one here's for you, Damien, you that black circle right in the middle. Oh, you got hurt. <laughs> Damn, that sure looked painful, didn't it? Yeah, hey, Jason, <laughs> I want you to smile and blow me a kiss for this one. All right, let's go back to Jesse. I just wounded him. I want him to bleed a little bit like he made my baby bleed. Oh, Jesse, <laughs> you know, that breaks my heart thinking about that scum. Because this right here is all that needs to be done to him and just shot slowly with a real nice firearm. And it ain't got no consideration or no feeling of who it's aiming at, just like they didn't care about killing my baby. I'd be happy with lining them up. I wouldn't have no problem with it. I think old Jesse's still kicking a little. Y'all go ahead and put him out of his misery. What kind of, what kind of range we got in the courtroom? Uh, probably about 10 foot right here. Go ahead and waste old Jesse. So that to be in much of a problem. No. Because I can just see the scum. That's good. Go ahead, he's wiggling. Alright. Oh, I can live with that. How do 
do you feel about the West Memphis Three support group? To me, it's like uh, Jeffrey Dahmer fan club, Charles Manson fan club, Ted Bundy. You could name them all. Some people want to come to the rescue of a savage to get maybe their 15 minutes of notoriety on TV. You know, here's where I live today, number 11. An apartment somewhere in the state of Arkansas. That's good enough. I came from a real nice big home with all the amenities and luxuries that you could have to what I like to call my humble, modest studio apartment. A giant 300 square feet. A bedroom, a living room, a kitchen, and a bathroom. But there's benefits to it. it takes me five minutes to vacuum, five minutes for the air conditioner to cool the place down, and I don't have to walk far to go to the bathroom. So it's a good little spot to live, to be by yourself, to control your thoughts, your emotions, and to live the rest of my life as God sees fit. As I look at all these dark clouds roaming in on me today, it can very easily remind me of May 5th, 1993. This half was a bright, sunshiny day. This half became gloom and doom. And as the death and destruction rolled into West Memphis, Arkansas and consumed three babies' life and killed them, it's kind of like this cloud front is rolling in and cooling off today and consuming me as I stand here in the wind amidst the storm. And the storm is what I have been in for the last three years. But thank God there's a bright side on the other side. I've been down in a lot of low valleys and people have tried to take me out, but I'm still here. Jesse, Jason, Damien, those names ring in my ears daily. And I still hate you forever and a day. Shall I still hate you? Those animals killed you. They're evil animals, and they killed you, and I blame them for your death. And all for you morons, infidels, and fools that think I had anything to do with it, go to hell! Go to hell! I love my wife more than any man could love his wife on the face of the earth. I'd have died for her. I took care of her. She was my life. I didn't do anything but love her. And for all you sick son of a bitches out there that think I had anything to do with her life, go to hell! Go to hell. Think what you might, but you can kiss my ass. You butchered my babies out here. I swore I'd stand at your grave and cuss it. Well, I'm doing it a little bit early. I'm gonna bury you three bastards right here and send you to hell. This crime scene tape 
I come off of what they stretched in front of me when they found my babies out here. Wouldn't let me buy. I thought it was just fitting to bring it back to your memorial fund. Jesse, you got your pliers. That's your head marker, you animal. Good day, men. Jason, there's yours. You want to worship the devil? Seem, I'm going to give you a farewell party. Now we're going to have some fun. I'm going to try to help send you on your way. You done got all my blessings, which aren't none. What do you think? You ready to die? Fire for fire. Death for death. Live through this fire, you animal. What well, ain't hot enough for you? This is the ditch that you killed him in. Do you remember? You want to eat my baby's testicles? Burn, you son of a bitch. Burn. Burn, go to hell. Burn. Can you remember screaming and hearing them holler? I stomp on your grave. I stomp on your grave. I stomp on your grave. Burn and go to hell. Burn like you deserve to burn. Makes you kind of think what life might have been if this crime hadn't have happened. Fears of satanic cults in Crittenden County reached their peak last week when the teenagers were arrested. Hey. A lot of memories. A lot of memories. Christopher's room right there, where you can see the set of three windows. This house and the Moore's house, I would say the majority of the past 17 years, they appear to have been empty. You could have people that are gonna go, oh, the house is cursed, or that's where the little boy lived that the devil worshipers killed. The people that brought into the propaganda that the West Memphis Police Department and the media put forth, devil worshipers, and, because of some of the graffiti around. Uh, they got on that bandwagon and everybody jumped on board and it was hysteria. People wouldn't let their children out. You jumped on that bandwagon too. Oh, I led the bandwagon. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. And I'm not scared of the devil. I gotta know who my comforter is. These three animals worshiping the devil made a sacrifice of three babies to Satan to think that it would empower them to fly, walk through walls. You know, what insanity. There, I mean, deep down inside, I knew I didn't kill anybody. 
I felt like the state had who they're supposed to have. Burn and go to hell! But what's right and what's wrong are two different things. And the right thing is that these three men are innocent. That's the right thing. And yes, it was hard for me to stand up and admit that I was wrong. But wrong is wrong. That's the letter from Damien Eccles, Varner Unit, P.O. Box 400, Grady, Arkansas. Dear John, first I want to start off by apologizing to you. I know how it feels to be accused of something you didn't do. Now, these years later, I see just how wrong I was, and I'm sorry. I did the same thing to you that everyone else did to me. The second thing I want to say is thank you. I know it can't have been easy to put aside all of your emotions and look at the evidence with cold, hard logic, but you did. I can't help but believe there is a reason for all of this for both of us. Take care and know that my thoughts are with you. Damien Nichols. I had something made, just the pros and cons of Terry Hobbs. This pretty well speaks for itself. Two items that would be on the innocent side that he needed to try to restrain three victims. Some say that might be a little difficult. Not really. Once he hit one child, the other two probably froze like a deer in headlights. According to the medical reports, all three children, basically, from blows to the head, would have died. And then, uh, possible secondary transfer that's referring to his hair that was found in a ligature tied to one of the children that's about all on the pro side you could find let's look at the guilty motive means and opportunity he had a violent past he worked in a slaughterhouse and he admits being in the woods at 6 30. terry hobbs admits it no one else puts him there he puts himself there no alibi. Can't count for the crucial times from 6.30 to 8, 8.30 to 9, 10 to 11.15, and from 2.30 to 5 a.m. That's a lot of gap in time of what were you doing, Mr. Hobbs? Where were you? Claims to have been with Jacoby. At times, Jacoby denies. Now, here's your own witness denying what you said. To me, that doesn't look too good. Not interviewed or cleared by the police. Now there, the West Memphis PD 101 totally fell on their face. They didn't go talk to Terry Hobbs and question him about what he did that night. They didn't treat him the way they treated me. Inconsistent statement. He never saw any of the boys that day. We know that's wrong. He was seen by three witnesses that were neighbors. That could have come out back on May 5th or 6th if the West Memphis PD would have canvassed that neighborhood, they just canvassed this neighborhood. Never went around and asked any of Hobbs' neighbors a word. They'd have told them that back then. He would have been caught in his lie then. He would have been the last person to have seen him. The police would have zeroed in on him instead of Damien, and they'd have got the real killer. And we would not be here talking today. I believe if this was presented to a jury, they would find Terry Hobbs guilty. This is more evidence and facts than against the West Memphis Three or me or anyone else. This is not right. And the people of Arkansas need to stand up and raise hell because three innocent men are gonna have to claim today that they're guilty for a crime they didn't know. And that's bullshit. They're innocent. They did not kill my son. And this is wrong what the state of Arkansas is doing to cover their ass. Amen. And I'm sick of it. Amen. Because the real killer is walking around free.